Alright guys, it's now time for another one of those cool girls response videos. Since Halloween's just around the corner, I'm going to talk about my favorite horror films. Most people are too old for trick or treating. Like I said earlier, my favorite 80s and 90s comedies, I didn't go through all my movies in my collection. I only picked the ones that are my favorites. It took me a month to type my script because Hurricane Ian has already hit parts of Florida after 5 damn years of Hurricane Irma. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get this underway. Start with the DVDs. First one I'd like to talk about is Beetlejuice with Michael Keaton. This movie I've seen a lot when I was little. The... Sorry, I've gotta fix the webcam camera just a little bit. Whoops. There we go. It's about Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis who die in a car accident and return as ghosts while driving on their way home from their vacation. After, they, after that, they found themselves stuck haunting their country residence, unable to leave the house. This is a pretty good horror film. Well, I've already seen this, except I haven't watched it in a long time. You should definitely check this one out. Next one is the 1992 original of Candyman. I don't have the 2021 remake yet, but I'll try to add to my collection. The sequels of the original were Farewells to the Flesh and Day of the Dead, but the first one is pretty good. And the next one is Child's Play. Annie Barclay got a doll for his sixth birthday. The doll was ch called Chucky, who can do anything violence. Annie's mom, Annie's mom's best friend Maggie, watches him while she works late. In the middle of Maggie watching television, Chucky hits her with a hammer and falls out the window to her death. The next morning, Chucky forces Andy to skip school and takes a train downtown. Andy is caught and was taken to a psychiatric hospital. After psychiatric psychiatric hospital, excuse me. After claiming Andy is a culprit, one of the scariest parts of the film is that Chucky tortures Doctor Death with a voodoo doll by breaking his bones. I don't think I can get the 2019 remake because Mark Hamill replaces D Brad Dorf as the voice of Chucky. And the next one I like to talk about is Ernest Scared Stupid. Now this might be one of my least favorite Ernest P. Warhol films, but in this movie, Ernest works as a garbage collector in Missouri and accidentally unleashes Jonas Mars Cartolo's character and turns all the children into wooden dolls. So Ernest and Erfa Kid's character team up to get rid of that beast and bring the victims back to life. I've seen this movie before and it was pretty scary. Not as scary as it should be, but it's not too bad. Next two films are the Friday the 13th films. Both the original and the remake. People say Jason Voorhees died as a boy, but he keeps coming back. This happens during the curse on Crystal Lake. I don't think they are going to do any more Friday the 13th films anytime soon. I don't know. Next two films I can talk about are... Gremlins and Gremlins 2 The New Batch. I mostly want to talk about the first movie since I haven't seen the second one yet. It's about Zach Galligan receiving a strange creature as a pet which then spawns other creatures who transform into a small destructive aggressive monsters that all wreak havoc on the whole town on Christmas Eve. This may not be a Christmas movie but it, since it was released spring of 1984 and growing to a new batch needs no introduction since I really haven't seen it yet. And next up, Michael Myers might be antagonistic, and it's Halloween the 2018 remake and Halloween Kills. Of course, Halloween Ends is already out. I'm gonna have to see this with my girlfriend and see if she likes scary movies or wait till it comes out on DVD. Next one is 
hide and seek. And the reason why this movie needs no introduction because when it, when I came to my neighbor's yard sale in my high school junior year, she has this on VHS, and I told her I was unable to watch this movie yet. There's someone that's had different endings, like happily drawing one final game, Emily's Fate, and Life of Catherine. And Emily's Fate, as far as I know, is an international theatrical ending. You've definitely got to see this. And the next one I had that i like to talk about is one of Adam Sandler's best anime films ever made. And it's Hotel Transylvania. Count Dracula is in this movie he owns a hotel where the world's monsters can take a rest of human civilization. He also invites some of the most famous monsters to celebrate her daughter Mavis's 118th birthday. This is a spectacular film to watch. I also enjoyed it. Next two are It and It Chapter 2. I like the first film better than the second because in the beginning of the first film, Georgie chases a paper sailboat in the rainy streets as it falls into the sewer. Pennywise, a dancing clown, encounters him and kills him by ripping his arm off and dragging him into the sewer. It Chapter 2 was okay, but it was but the first It was way better than the second because it all started with Pennywise killing Georgie and the children paying attention to those red balloons. Even though I haven't seen these two horror films in theaters, they're what I recommend. Next film is one of, one, one of Steven Spielberg's greatest films and it's Jaws. In this movie, Roy, Schne Roy Scheider is a police chief who helps Richard Dreyfuss and Robert Shaw hunt a man named Great White Shark that attacks beachgoers at a summer resort town. This movie should have been rated PG-13 since it was a mild scary movie, but, it, they, but they didn't start making PG-13 movies till 1984. Believe it or not, you should definitely check this one out. Let me uh, make a meat snack. Let me. Let me Make a neat stack of the DVDs before I move on to the next one. Next film is a remake of Little Shop of Horrors of Rick, Rick Moranis. He's a florist who pines for Alan Green, and during a story eclipse, he discovers an unusual plant which only which feeds only on human flesh and blood. The growing plant attracts a, a great deal of business from the previously struggling store. After Seymour feeds Steve Martin to the plant after Martin's accidental death, he must come up with more bodies for the increasingly bloodthirsty plant. Definitely a good movie to check out. Next one is... Monster House. B.J. Walter's parents go to a dentist convention for the weekend while his baby star takes care of him while they're away. Anything goes in the scary house's lawn stays in, the, in its lawn like the little girl's tricycle, Charles basketball, Ziggy's kite, etc. While the homeowner was away in the hospital due to the heart attack, B.J. and his friends were caught by two police officers for trespassing and they were going to get apprehended and arrested. But the House devours the cops, the kids, and the cop car, and the kids found their way out of the house. They saw the homeowner return home from the hospital, but only wearing a hospital gown and a sling on his arm. While the homeowner's house became alive, the four uh, were being chased by it, and DJ threw a stick of dynamite through the chimney. The movie came out during the summertime besides fall of 2006. Very good film I recommend. Next film is the remake of Polar Geist. All seems well for Sam Rockwell, Rosie, Rosemary DeWitt, and their three children as they moved into their new house in the suburbs of Illinois. Soon the youngest star, Kennedy Clements, began take, talking to an imaginary friend, or so the family thinks. It's not long before sinister spirits wreak havoc in the home holding Clemens captive and forcing the parents to consult a team of parapsychologists who engage the supernatural entities in the battle for the girl's freedom. You definitely should be able to watch this. I'll never horror film I recommend. 
last but not least DVD I have before we move on to VHS's I want to talk about is Try It's Own Movie. This horror film has four segments in the prologue. It was based on Rod Serling's TV series which is from the late 1950s to the mid 1960s. This film came out before the original series spin-offs. That's it for the DVDs, now on to the VHS tapes. Oops. The first two are the Adams Family and Adams Family Values. The Adams Family is another great movie based off of the Seth Rising TV series, but out of both of them, I like the Adams Family Values a little bit better because it has to deal with one state and Pugsley being sent away to camp and then getting treated terribly there. And then that one kid falls in love with Wednesday and Uncle Fester be get being married to that one chick, John Kosak. Yeah, these are the films I recommend too. There were also a third film that I don't say you mean, but that one's not very good. And that's why I'm not bothering uh, getting it. Apparently it's from Warner Bros. too. Next one is Alter Stage with William Hurt, who combines experiments in sensory de deprivation tanks with a powerful and hallucinogenic drugs, convinced that it may help him unlock different states of consciousness. The experiments are successes at first, but as Hurt continues his work, he begins to experience altered mental and also like physical states. As he spends more time in sensory depri deprivation, he grip, his grip on reality begins to slip away. It's very, it's very emotional that we all miss William Hurt. He passed away seven months ago. He was a very good actor. Next film I like to talk about is Bram Stoker's Dracula. It has no single protagonist, but it opens with so. so Solicitor Jonathan Harker taking a business trip to stay away at the castle of a Transylvania noble, Count Dracula. I dressed up as Dracula for Halloween when I was in seventh grade, and then my brother dressed up as him the year after. And the next one is Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which they made a 1997 TV series based on the film. For Christy Swanson, nothing is the, is the same after she meets Donald Sutherland. Sutherland tells the team that he's been sent to train her to fight vampires, and he proves himself by displaying his supernatural powers. Swanson is quick study and soon takes fellow student Luke Perry under her wing, repeatedly saving him from fierce bloodsuckers. But when Rukter Hauer gets rambunctious, she must go to war again. I haven't seen the show, but I've seen the movie, and it's a pretty good film I recommend. And the next one I'd like to talk about is Kate Fear. Nick Nolte is an attorney who not only withholds evidence that would acquit violent sex offender Robert De Niro with fake charges. De Niro spends 14 years in prison with De Niro, but after De Niro releases after knowing about Nolte, just the site he devotes his life to stalking a strong devoted family. When practical attempts to stop the Nero fail, Note realizes that he must act outside the law and to protect his wife and daughter. It's pretty scary, but it's good. Next one is Hocus Pocus of Bette Midler. I've already seen the first one, but not the second one. I know the second one just came out on Disney Plus. If you guys want to check it out, And the next one is Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. As Dr. Frankenstein is dying, he shares a, ta a tale of gruesome terror with a sea captain. Victor, using previous experiments of, by a brilliant scientist, was able to bring a creature named after him and assembled from body parts back to life. Once he realized how destructive his ex experiments had become, he abandoned the creature and tried to la live a normal life with his fiancée. Helena Bonham Carter. The lonely creature seeks out Victor and demands one of the two things and bride of revenge. 
bri bri a brighter revenge. Excuse me. My brother dressed up as Frankenstein for Halloween a year before he started middle school. And the next year are the original Scream from 1996, Scream 2, and Scream 3. These are the best films of the series directed by Russ Craven except for the fourth one which is directed by the Weinstein Company besides Dimension Films. But the rest of those are pretty good. Sam goes to same goes to the fourth one, but I'd rather not show it to you, since it's not distributed by Dimension. To me, the remake of Scream came out earlier this year, but in which I'm not going to borrow a game, and, and it was also made by a different director. And the next one I'd like to show you is a Stephen King favorite with Jack Nicholson, and it's The Shining. Nicholson became Nicholson becomes a writer. No, Nicholson becomes a winter caretaker at the isolated Overlook Hotel in Colorado, hoping to cure his writer's block. He settles in along with his wife Shelley Nuval and his son Dane Lloyd, who is plagued by psychics from from an Promonitons. As Nicholson's writing goes nowhere and Lloyd's divisions become more disturbing, Nicholson discovers the hotel's dark secrets and begins to unravel into a homicidal maniac hell bent on terrorizing his family. I, I also have Doctor Sleep on DVD, but the reason why I rather not show it to you because of her, I, w I saw while doing opening videos was a little bit of an ear rape. Because every time I hear the music in the trailer, I turn on the volume. I thought that our sleep was okay, but the shine did, but, but they're both pretty good. Shit. I got a Vegas and Neat stack. Sorry, I don't fall. There we go. And the next one stars Johnny Depp and Sleepy Hollow, based on Washington Irving's best-selling novel. Johnny Depp also played Edward Scissorhands, Jack Sparrow, and Pirates of the Caribbean. Willy Wonka and Charlie in the Chocolate Factory and the Mad Hatter in the live action... Oh, sorry, let me start over. And next one stars Johnny Depp in the Sleepy Hollow based on Washington Irving's best line novel. Johnny Depp also played Edward Scissorhands, Jack Sparrow in Pirates of the Caribbean, Willy Wonka in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and the Matt Hatter in the live best remake of Alice in Wonderland. He was one of the best famous actors, especially when he played Ichabod Crane. And last but not least, we've got The Haunted Mansion. A. Murphy gets accused by his wife of neglecting his son and daughter, so he takes his family on a vacation. They stop by a sinister mansion on the way that Murphy had been asked to sell, only to discover it's been haunted by Nathaniel Parker, who plays Master Gracie, and Terrence Stamp, who plays Ram as Ramsley. I'm sorry, and Terrence Stamp, who plays Ramsley, excuse me, and two other servants who need some help breaking a curse. It's too bad that Stretching Room isn't in the movie, but it's my favorite part of the ride. I also like the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, Splash Mountain, and Space Mountain as my other favorite rides at Disney World. But the Haunted Mansion is my all-time favorite. Nobody likes it because th they thought this ride was was pretty scary and creepy. But it was alright. I respect their opinion on it. And that's going to be it for me talking about my favorite horror films. If you liked the video, please be sure to share, subscribe, comment, and click the post of it. And that's going to be it for me talking about my favorite horror films. If you liked the video, please be sure to share, subscribe, comment, and click the post of vacation bell. I might do my favorite sports films or my favorite Christmas films next. 
I'm not sure what my schedule is, but I'll see you guys in the next video. This video is now adjourned.